The anime begins with an entity fighting hundreds of goblins and slashing through them with his sword under the moonlight, the goblins chase a man as he travels in a carriage towards the kingdom, just then the warriors show up and defend him from the goblins by killing them. Later that day, Fate stands guard at the Veilric house as he envies the warriors happily passing by as they talk about goblin subjugation, he regrets never being able to be successful due to his gluttony and holds his stomach which growls in hunger, in the evening the holy knights walk into the city and a man accidentally drops a fruit near Hado's foot. Hado and Memel begin to bully the man and beat him up while claiming he can be beheaded for disrespecting a holy knight. Later the holy knights arrive home at the house of Valric and toss Fate's daily wages on the floor, demanding he pick it up. They stomp on his hands as he picks up the coins, they mock him and beat him up while he curses himself and his skill of gluttony, just then they are interrupted by Lady Roxy who stops them claiming their behavior isn't holy knight worthy and that they should treat him better. She also helps him get up once they leave and offers him words of encouragement while whipping his bleeding eye, she offers to swap shifts and tells him to report it to her if they do that again, Fate heads over to the store to eat some bread, the shopkeeper sees him beaten up once again and tells him not to suffer the same fate as his predecessors. All along he cannot stop thinking about Valoric's cruelty, Lady Roxy's kindness and his own incapabilities, just then he sees a few bandits running in the distance and rushes to alert Lady Roxy about it, she leaves him in charge of the standing guard and rushes to finish the bandits. He watches her vanish into the darkness to the sounds of clashing swords. Just as she disappears a bandit rushes out towards him, he is perplexed about whether he should run but decides to stay and fight because Lady Roxy trusted him with the spot, he uses the tip of the flagpole to stab through the chest of the bandit and kill him. Just then a voice claims that his gluttony skill has been activated and appraisal and mind reading have been added to his skills, Lady Roxy returns to check up on fate, and he is able to hear her thoughts, she thanks him and offers him an opportunity to work at the house of heart, and he accepts the offer, later that night he wonders what his powers mean. The next day he decides to take his two silver coins to purchase a sword but is told that for two silver, he can only select from the scrap swords, he inspects them and utilizes his appraisal abilities, he comes across a sword that speaks to him, the sword introduces itself as greed and claims they are similar, convincing him to buy it. The Veilricks discuss fate leaving them to work for the House of Heart, Memel expresses her hate saying they should teach Lady Roxy a lesson, but Raphael claims there are plenty of replacements for him and they shouldn't butcher their relations, Memel also questions him about his research and he claims to be researching to obtain an immortal body. Fate wanders with his sword out in the wilderness, just then a goblin attempts to attack him, but he uses his sword to slash through and kill the goblin, Fate's gluttony skill is activated and he has an increase in stats and a boost in strength, Fate turns over to see many more hefty and armed goblins. The sword laughs, telling him that each one is a hundred goblins, they charge at fate but he tactfully takes them down and has multiple gluttony skill activations, the sword brings it to his notice that he isn't hungry as he reflects on his skill increase, the sword explains that the gluttony skills devour status in exchange for skills. That's why he doesn't gain experience and he stays on level 1, the sword tells him they are the same kind and instructs him to keep anyone from finding out his powers as gluttony is a skill that violates God's principles, the sword proclaims fate as his master and pledges to fight by his side. The sword tells fate to collect the goblin ears and exchange them for coins. Fate decides to use the coins to get a good meal, but the sword insists he spends them to bring him back into shape. Just then fate bumps into a man dragging a little girl along, the little girl asks him for help and he follows them into a warehouse. He sees the man terrorize the little girl and threaten to sell her as a slave to the holy knights, Fate watches from hiding, infuriated as he comes up with a plan to save her. Elsewhere a sister teaching kids about skills given by Lord Laplace, the kids find it very unfair that the holy knights possess highly valuable skills while some get weak skills, just then another sister arrives to inform her that Sahara hasn't been found anywhere around and heads towards the city, the scene switches to Sahara being tied up by the goon and crying. As the goon leaves fate undoes her shackles, only to notice the man has not left, the goon draws out his sword to fight but fate takes the little girl, 
runs in between the boxes and hides, as the goon searches for them, fate follows greed's advice and pushes the boxes over him. He then slashes at the goon cutting through his sword and chest, he then stabs him and questions him about who was behind this kidnapping, the goon reveals it is hate of Leric, fate takes the girl to get food, it is her first time eating meat and she relishes the meal, fate then takes her safely to the sisters. On the way back Greed tells him about the new skill he has acquired, he realizes that Sharp Edge is incredibly strong and could have resulted in his death against the goon, Greed reminds him the next day is his first day at work at the House of Heart and that he should purchase new clothes. The scene switches to a bar where a man talks to the bartender about Lord Mason's demise and how Lady Roxy won't be able to prevent the tyranny of the Holy Knights, the next morning Fate arrives at the House of Heart and is amazed to see Lady Roxy in a dress, she takes him to her father's grave to introduce him. Fate learns that her father has just passed away five days ago and is amazed by her compassion, she requests him to help her make the house a lively one again, just then she goes to shake his hand, but he refrains as he doesn't want to be able to read her mind, a week passes and Fate is fairly acquainted with his colleagues and manages to fit in. They however wonder why he is hungry right after lunch break, just then Miss Haru arrives to call him to meet Milady, Lady Roxy calls him, Faye, a nickname, he realizes it's the same nickname his dad gave him, she claims it is to lighten things in the house together calling him family. Mid-conversation Fate faints and only wakes up to find himself in his room with a note from Roxy asking him to take the next day off, he questions Greed about the changes in his body, Greed tells him that it is a change that comes with his skill and he will crave souls till the very end. If he doesn't kill, he will starve to death. Greed brings to Fate's notice that his eyes will turn red when he is at his limit, that night Fate heads out to kill goblins and rid himself of starvation, he kills multiple goblins with his sword and heads to the hobgoblin nest to kill more fierce goblins, just then he hears the footsteps of a much larger goblin heading towards him. Greed tells him about the goblin's skill to heal wounds, saying it will pose a threat, Fate uses a sneak attack to slice off an arm of the goblin, the goblin begins to swing its arm around to attack Fate, but he is able to precisely attack and kill the giant, Fate earns the self-healing skill as well as stats, Greed tells him that he can use his stats to upgrade him. However he would have to use all of them up, Fate agrees as it is a partnership and both of them should level up together, upgrading the sword allows him to use it as a bow which doesn't require arrows, he is able to shoot arrows out of thin air and they follow the target to hit them, he practices his new abilities on the goblins around. Roxy at the gate, tells him that it's her in disguise leaving on a secret inspection, Fate apologizes as he doesn't recognize her and she invites him to accompany her on the journey, the two make their way to the city and Roxy requests him to call her Lexi for the day, Greed teases them, and Fate tells him to shut up. Unfortunately Roxy thinks he is telling her to shut up and apologizes for being annoying, Fate assures that he wasn't saying it to her and they proceed with the inspection, she requests to see his sword, but Fate fears she will know who he really is, she however doesn't find out, they proceed to the market and taste grapes. She accidentally claims they were grown in her own house which makes the vendor suspicious, Fate however covers up for her, just then a holy knight arrives and hears Fate's stomach grumble, he goes on to intimidate Fate but Roxy steps in between. The holy knight almost realizes she is a holy knight, but the two pretend to be a couple and she scolds him for not eating the breakfast prepared by her and apologize, she feels the thrill of linking arms with a boy and Fate reads her mind and pulls back. They proceed to see a vendor selling lucky stones that could possibly have a gem inside. Fate uses his appraisal skill to look into an ore and find it to be a dud, Roxy however returns the stone, and they walk away, Roxy then goes on to inquire about an incident from bypasses discussing it, but they recommend she speak to a warrior, Fate takes her to the bar he used to dine at. They inquire from the owner and old ad and get to know that it is probably a monster who killed the goblins, Roxy gets harassed by a few warriors there but she teaches them a lesson, they realize she is a holy knight and apologize, after leaving they run into the Vlerics harassing a boy claiming he is under their protection. Roxy frees him from them and they take the boy and feed him delicious food, unfortunately they aren't able to find the child's mother and offer to let him stay at her house for the night, 
Just then the mother approaches them and they hand over the child, Fate is concerned Roxy might see him if she ventures out to fight the monster. The next day Fate heads over to the market and buys a mask to conceal his identity, he also purchases an ore and gifts her the one with the blue gem she likes. Later the warriors coming across Fate in disguise standing triumphant over a pile of dead goblin bodies, they name him Corpse before running away. Back at the Heart House Roxy approaches Fate, asking him to accompany her on a secret mission, and takes him to the Hart family vineyards, she introduces him to her mother and her mother asks him if he likes her. Fate claims that he cares very dearly about Roxy but this makes her shy, and she runs to her room, returning to her room reminds Roxy about her father, who inspired her to become a holy knight, she then goes out with Fate to harvest grapes. A worker at the vineyard tells him about the seasonal harvest and monsters that come to attack it, explaining that Roxy comes to defend the vineyard against the kobolds, later that evening Fate sees a girl with red eyes and is also unable to use his appraisal skill on her, she claims to leave the kobolds to him, just then Roxy arrives and claims the girl is Galia. Fate confronts her about fighting the kobolds, she reassures him that she will be alright, the next morning the workers find the vineyards to be destroyed, Roxy, Fate and a few warriors trace their location and watch from the bushes, they see another stronger kobold whose level is identified as 50, Fate feels deep hunger and realizes he should hurry up. Returning back to the workers, she promises to defeat the beast and fight it the next day as she makes preparations, the same night Fate approaches the herd and decides to begin slaying it, he transforms Greed into a bow and begins taking out the lower level kobolds, he then uses Greed to slash through more. Unfortunately the beast grabs his arrows when shot at, rendering them useless, the beast unleashes a powerful punch throwing Fate to the ground, Fate pretends to be dead and slashes the other kobold when it has its guard down, Greed informs Fate that he can use his first level arts if he gives him 10% of his stats. This transforms Greed into a much more powerful weapon, blows through the punches of the kobold beast and kills it, leaving a huge crater in the ground, just then Fate has a stroke after killing a creature of a much higher level than him, the next morning the warriors arrive at the site to see the kobolds already dead and the huge crater created. Roxy informs her mother about it but points out the destruction done to the landscape, however she is happy the monsters are taken care of, she suspects it is done by Galia, before taking leave Roxy's mother requests that he be by Roxy's side and support her till the end. Returning back to the capital, Fate goes on his hints but learns that goblins won't be sufficient anymore, later that day Fate overhears that Hado is joining the hunt for corpse, he also learns about the Galleon expedition, Roxy is assigned to the Galleon expedition. Fate requests that she not go but she has her mind set on the mission, the Vlerics celebrate their opportunity to get rid of the Hart family, Fate comes face to face against Hado and the other warriors in their hunt for corpse. Hado facing off against Fate, Hado deploys his warriors to attack Fate but Fate defeats them with ease and the rest run away, Fate then faces Hado, Fate reveals his face and shocks Hado, Hado uses the holy sword attack but Fate dodges it, Fate consults Greed before slicing Hado's sword. He confronts Hado about all the turmoil he brought to innocent people before slamming his face into multiple trees, Fate then uses his special attack to blow Hado to pieces leaving only his body, Fate questions him about Roxy's mission, Hado pleads that he will cancel the expedition if his life is spared, but Fate drives a sword through his chest and kills him. Roxy prepares for her trip to Galia and leaves assuring them that she will meet them in three years, Fate also leaves the job at the House of Heart to become a warrior, Haru gives him his pay for the days he worked as well as severance pay before he leaves, Roxy arrives to give a speech to the warriors accompanying her to Galia and meets Miria and Mugan. Rhyne conducts research on the monsters slain by the corpse, they realize they aren't normal arrow wounds, but instead wounds inflicted by magic arrows cast by the black sword, they contemplate the ability of the powers it holds, on his journey fate arrives at Tetra City, he inquires about a ride to Galia but is informed to return the next day. He decides to do his research and have food during his wait, entering a restaurant he sees a man pleading with the warriors to help with their monster problems, but they end up bullying him, 
fate teaches them a lesson and recognizes the man to be Set, he recalls his moments in the village and how Set used to bully him. He also recalls Set's father kicking him out of the village after the death of his father, however on Set's request, he agrees to help the village fight the monsters, arriving at the village fate is met with animosity from Set's father, his father suggests they'd rather sacrifice Set to the monsters and buy time for more warriors, Set however vouches for fate and takes him home. Set claims to be a changed man after the birth of his daughter and renounces his father's ideas, he tells fate about the monsters, giving him an idea of how to fight them, following that Set's daughter plays with him and offers him candy. Later when they sit for dinner, fate abruptly faints, Set questions him about eating anything suspicious, his daughter reveals that she offered him candy given to her by her grandfather, Set is afraid his grandfather is serious about offering fate as a sacrifice. The monsters attacking the village, causing destruction of life and property while fate lies unconscious, Set prepares an antidote bringing fate back to consciousness, fate steps onto the battlefield and takes out the monsters one by one with his scythe, he gains the fireball skill by killing them and now faces the leader, fate uses the scythe to cut through the leader as well. The next morning they overlook the extent of the devastation, and Set decides to move to the village, Set asks Fate to punch him to feel even, and Greed insists he does so, Fate goes on to visit his father's grave before setting off for Galia, the cart driver offers to pay Fate three gold coins to keep him safe on the journey. Just then a few goons appear in the path and threaten to steal everything, Fate steps in between them to fight them but the driver clings to Fate, not allowing him to fight, just then an axe falls from the sky and chases them away, Main appears and asks for a ride, as she boards the carriage it tips over. Main orders her weapon sloth to go back to normal, putting the carriage back in position, they continue their journey to Galia and they have a conversation, Main asks for food and ends up eating a lot of Fate's jerky, they finally arrive in Lancaster, the scene cuts to Lord Rudolph putting up an act of saving a girl from monsters, Fate learns that Roxy hasn't arrived yet. Main falls asleep and Fate carries her, Rudolph executes two men for petty reasons, Fate takes Main to a room and lays her down to rest, Greed reveals that her weapon is also a weapon of mortal sin, he tells him more about the mortal sins, Greed insists Fate improve his strength to resist, that night they go out monster hunting, and Greed insists he fill himself slowly. Fate fights and takes out a sand golem using the fireball skill, he spots another sand golem but Greed insists he hold on, Main wakes up and grabs something to eat, she sees the poster claiming to reward the person who takes down the sand golem, he then sees many warriors fighting a much stronger sand golem and heads over to attack it. He eliminates it using the bloody ptarmigan, the warriors appreciate his strength, and he introduces himself as corpse, reaching home he tells Main that he took down the sand golems and she is infuriated. They go to collect their reward and he offers her half of the reward, just then Lord Rudolph arrives and commands them to work under him, Main gets annoyed and sends him flying with one blow of her weapon. Main getting upset about a taunt from fate, causing Sloth to become extremely heavy and crush the wheels of the cart, while the driver mends the wheel, Main strays off into a village where they meet the village chief a holy knight. Fate asks him for a place to stay, but the Holy Knight challenges him to cross swords, Fate engages in a sword fight with the chief but loses. The chief agrees to let him stay at his place if he agrees to train under him, Fate agrees, Aaron gives them a place to stay and then proceeds to train Fate, he corrects Fate's stance and posture to help him better utilize his stats, Aaron notices the change in eye color, and Fate becomes even better at fighting, Returning to the house they find the food scattered all around. Later that evening Fate comes across a picture of Aaron's family, he also sees Aaron looking at the castle, the next day Fate trains with Aaron and displays a significant improvement in skills, that same night Aaron tells them about his castle and how he had lost his family to the crowned beast while he was away on an expedition. Fate agrees to accompany Aaron in avenging his family while Main stays back to guard the village, as they enter the premises of the castle, they face an army of skeletons whom they effortlessly defeat, entering the castle Aaron's wife and son welcome him back. But soon enough his son tries to attack him. Aaron is aware that it is an illusion and blocks the attack. They engage in combat, 
fate intends to kill the others, but greed brings it to his attention that they will not be slain, as the souls devoured by gluttony can never pass on, fate heads out to find the Lich Lord instead, he shoots an arrow at the wall revealing the Lich Lord, fate engages in combat with the Lich Lord. Just then Aaron arrives to assist him, Aaron sees his wife's soul pleading to reconsider and recalls the day he left for the mission, fate and Aaron combine their grand cross attack and finish off the Lich Lord. Standing in the ruins Aaron sees the souls of his family and gets a chance to apologize to them, as they share their final hug, the Lich Lord attempts to attack them again but fate intercepts it with an arrow, as they exit the place they find another army of skeletons, but they effortlessly defeat them. Returning Aaron compensates Maine for waiting and taking care of the village, he claims to have seen her years ago, and she hadn't aged a bit, Maine reveals that she is a phantom and cannot die. Fate and Mine on their way to Galia after departing from Hausen, Lady Roxy and the warriors arrive at Hausen land, Lady Roxy informs them about Aaron Barbados and the Lich Lord, just then Aaron arrives and recognizes Roxy, he tells them about the man who helped them slay the Lich Lord but refuses to give them a name. Aaron learns about Mason's death and offers instructions to help Roxy through Galia, while walking Fate and Mine reach the place where she was born. She then takes him to a huge cocoon, they decide to engage in combat with the chimera, mine strikes the head, and a huge monster emerges with a girl in its chest. A battle erupts, and the chimera sends a wave of lava behind them, mine counters it with sloth, she then goes on to cut off an arm but it regenerates, mine chops off its arm once again but it regenerates and also grows wings, fate decides to go into starvation mode, they use a combination attack to damage the Chimera heavily. The Chimera creates a huge barrier around it, but Fate identifies the weak spot and cracks it open, the Chimera takes off flying to recover, but Mine uses Sloth to hurl him into the air after the monster, reaching mid-air Fate upgrades Greed to a new level, the Chimera creates another barrier, trapping Fate inside with it to incinerate him. Fate quickly attacks the girl in the Chimera to take it down, during this battle fate sees a vision of many doctors with children, one of them being the girl in the chimera and also mine, fate learns that he himself can potentially become a chimera one day and requests mine to kill him if he does. Fate reaches the bulwark between the kingdom and Galia, the sentinel city Babylon, fate and greed make their way into Babylon, greed reveals that the weapons of mortal sin are indestructible, fate sees Roxy arrive at the village and puts on his mask. He also senses the strange presence of a woman in the crowd. Fate in the city of Babylon scouting the warriors, he spots former holy knights and people holding grudges against them, meanwhile Lady Roxy arrives in Babylon and meets Northern. They form an alliance, Fate finds everything in the town extremely expensive, when urged to buy a new scabbard the store owner persuades him. However upon learning it costs 500 gold coins he immediately heads out, that evening fate encounters warriors inviting him to join them in monster hunting, he declines and goes on alone, as he walks he enters an area filled with toxic moss floating in the air, greed advises him to cover his nose while passing through. He's then alerted to an army of orcs approaching, the warriors engage in battle with them, another army approaches from a different direction, greed upgrades to level 3 turning into a massive shield, Fate uses it to block attacks and charges at the goblins killing them, after killing them all, Fate collects their ears to exchange for gold coins. As he reaches the counter the warriors attempt to snatch the goblin ears, claiming he stole them, they try to attack Fate but he teaches them a lesson, upon collecting his reward Roxy confronts him about the violence, she understands he acted in self-defense and though he went overboard, she spares him. She also spares the goons and advises them against causing such a situation again, following that the weapons crafter approaches fate again, offering a deal to endorse his business due to fate's increasing popularity, he agrees to give fate a complete gear makeover at a far lower price, and fate accepts. Later fate notices a crowd gathered around a restaurant and decides to check it out, thinking the prices might be low, just then Eris walks out thrilling the crowd, Fate himself cannot take his eyes off her, Eris approaches him addressing him by his real name, Fate is surprised and heads in to have a conversation with her. She reveals that she also possesses powers related to the deadly sin of lust, 
She talks about her plan to kill Roxy, claiming a stronger entity will emerge upon Roxy's death as goodness accumulates, Fate is appalled to hear that anything good could result from Roxy's death and storms out, swearing to protect her. Lady Roxy being informed about a loss of contact with a force sent toward the Great Ravine, they prepare to head out and rescue the force, Fate inquires with someone regarding the scabbard for greed and is informed he needs a special kind of magic crystal, Fate sets out in search of these crystals, on his journey Fate comes up against a few orcs and defeats them. Lady Roxy's compass isn't functioning, and it's too cloudy to determine direction from the stars, they decide to follow the trails of orcs considering the population is most dense toward the south, Fate tries to get some rest but has a strange nightmare, he sees a strange girl in white and suddenly everything turns red. Some of the enemies he had killed emerge from underground and pull him in, he quickly wakes up and senses a few crowned beasts approaching him, Greed recognizes them as salamanders, Fate attacks them but they realize something is controlling them, the salamanders attack Roxy and her team. Just as they get cornered, Fate emerges and puts an end to the salamanders, they notice a strange symbol on their foreheads, Roxy thanks him and they head their separate ways, as Fate ventures out he sees a lush green patch with monster statues all around, he also sees Eris in the wilderness and realizes she has something to do with the happenings. He also spots a coreless chimera lying in the wilderness, just then he sees a huge explosion in the direction Roxy was heading, he once again swoops in to help them, he tells Roxy to target the core and they manage to defeat the chimera. However the chimera opens a huge hole in the ground, causing them to free fall into the deep pit, Fate grabs Roxy to protect her from the fall, after the fall he finds his mask has slipped off, he quickly puts it on before Roxy wakes up, as they converse Roxy reveals that he reminds her of someone back in the capital. Just then the gluttony kicks in turning his eyes red, he runs away and looks for the monster he had sensed and is attacked by the chimera, he once again slays the chimera and finds a similar symbol on the forehead of the monster, reminding him of Eris. A huge structure of crystals which fate is looking for, falls in front of them, Roxy reunites with the others after exiting the cave, elsewhere a man with a similar mask to fate's appears. Roxy challenging fate to a sword fight due to the number of complaints against him, she is surprised to see him wielding the power of the holy knight, fate successfully knocks Roxy down but notices her pendant, the gemstone he had gifted her which gives her time to strike back, accepting defeat fate agrees to join her forces. Roxy also recognizes that his style is similar to Eren's, Fate discusses with Mugan the appearance of monsters, Mugan informs him that his daughter is a researcher with extensive knowledge about the monsters, the scene shifts to Lane discussing suspicious activity from the Vlerix. Suddenly emergency alarms ring, and Roxy along with her troops prepares to counter the incoming orc attack, Fate notices something approaching them from underground and uses greed to shoot it, forcing it to emerge from the surface, the slime attacks him with acid rain but he turns greed into a shield. Fate then attacks it but it splits into multiple parts, some engaging him while others attack the royal army, he uses 20% of his stats to unleash an extremely powerful attack on the slime, unfortunately the slime doesn't die, just then Fate spots another warrior with a similar mask and suspects it is Eris. He gets surrounded by the slime and lets one consume him only to kill it internally, Fate then attempts to attack the mysterious warrior but is outmatched, he manages to destroy the mask and discovers that it has been Northern all along, Northern summons a divine dragon to attack Roxy, putting Fate in a difficult situation. To worsen matters the slimes hinder his path, the divine dragon unleashes a massive attack on Roxy, but Fate arrives in time to use greed as a shield and protect her, in doing so his mask breaks off, revealing his real identity to Roxy. She also notices his red eyes, however Fate makes a run for it to defeat the Divine Dragon, he uses the Grand Cross returnable to bind the Divine Dragon, engaging in combat with Northern, he loses his arm, just as Northern stands in front of him to finish him off, Fate tricks him with magic and stabs him in the back. Fate immediately finds himself in a strange dimension with Luna, the girl at Haniel's core, she thanks him for killing her and reveals that his skill will consume him, causing him to lose control of himself, 
Just as he is about to fall into the souls, greed appears as a person and grabs his arm, fate returns to the real world and begins to fight the divine dragon. He hurls greed at the divine dragon and delivers a powerful strike, fate recognizes that its power lies in the domain of E, but manages to defeat the dragon, this overcharges his skill and he begins to get overwhelmed by it, he uses all his stats to upgrade greed so he is powerless if he goes berserk. Just then mine arrives, and fate begs her to kill him before he goes berserk, she prepares to chop his head off, but Lady Roxy swoops in at the last moment and saves him, she tells him that she doesn't hate him even after learning the truth and takes him with her, fate wakes up confused in an unknown place and realizes he has lost an arm. Eris and Mine enter to converse with him, Mine reveals that Northern was only a puppet being controlled by Envy, Mine also reveals that she hurled Envy as far as she possibly could, following that Eris reveals that they will need his help, and Fate agrees that they will keep Lady Roxy out of trouble. Roxy takes fruits and goes to meet Fate, but finds a note on the table apologizing for leaving without notice and for his gluttony skill, Roxy recalls the first time she saw Fate and pledges to become stronger for when the day comes, the scene switches to Lane speaking to Raphael, Raphael leaves for another room with a glowing rock. Greed's magic staff form regenerates Fate's missing arm, Eris promises to see him in the capital after he has regrown his power from zero, having given all his existing power to Greed, as Fate sets out to begin hunting monsters again Greed demands an even finer scabbard to celebrate reaching Domain of E. So this is the end of anime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it.